Apparently, it's White Boy Summer. So, oh yeah. my well, yeah, god, I saw that. Need, what? I saw that. That was what Chet Hanks <laughs> being a fucking wild man. <laughs> Wake it up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Marky P Show. Before I introduce my guests, who could be potentially the best wedding date I've ever had, uh, first, I'm going to talk about my balls. Um, Manscaped, proud sponsor of the show. Uh, with code FINDYOURBALLS, you get 20% off of free shipping. Summertime, clean them up. We're keeping it. We're going to keep it low-key today. That I don't need... Good. I've talked about my balls for literally, I don't know, 15 weeks in a row, it seems. And I'm sure people are sick of hearing about my balls. Well, then we don't have to talk about it any longer. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We, my balls are perfect anyways. So make sure you go to man. <laughs> make sure you go to Manscaped. Use the code find your balls. Get 20% off free shipping. Uh, and Heather B, one of my close friends, filling in, coming out of the bullpen. <laughs> amazing wedding date. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's fucking. I mean, thank, thanks for showing up like on an hour notice. Yeah. I mean, you know, when when you have to show up, you have to show up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you were out in the corner a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. You can see, say, say, say it how you want. Yeah, but that's fine. I just plucked you from the corner. Yeah, I saved you. Um, how was your Easter? Easter was great. Um, it was like the first time in what over a year that my family's been able to get together and the whole group. The whole group, although I mean, it's not a ton of us, but um, you know, before COVID and like. Since I can remember, we would get together every single week at my grandmother's house yeah. for dinner. Wednesdays? Wednesdays. Wednesday dinner. Wednesday grandma dinner. I think anyone who knows me knows that. Um, so, yeah, it was the first time since last March, early March, Jeez. that we've been able to get together. So that was fun. And the Easter Bunny made an appearance. Um, like, really? Wow. Yes. And my nephew, he's one, not a fan, not into it. Does not like the Easter Bunny. I mean, let's, the Easter Bunny's terrifying. Yeah, that's true. The Easter Bunny is kind of terrifying. <laughs> like, have you? If yeah, you it's now that cute, I think about it, and the then you look terrifying. at the face and the eyes, and you're like, "Yeah, I don't even. I'm not <laughs> yeah, even down." With yeah, this. you're dead inside. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Easter Bunny is absolutely dead inside. And because you know, characters like that don't talk. Like when they're interacting, like the Easter Bunny wasn't saying oh, anything. Yeah. So <laughs> nonverbal mascot, right? Yeah, it was. That's, yeah, that's strange. Yeah. And you, you got little nieces and nephews sprinting around. Mm -hmm. How was that? It was fun. It's chaos. I mean, in there's four children and there was, I think. <laughs> Including you or no, are you, are you five? Are you the fifth? <laughs> I'm the fifth. Um, and I think 24 Easter baskets. So like any adult that came, came with four Easter baskets. Jeez. So it was just like candy. So it's essentially toys. Christmas. It was literally Christmas. <laughs> How we do it? I see people get like, um, people get money out of like, what do you like? When I was a kid, inside the Easter basket was like one piece of candy. Yeah, or like not in the basket in the egg. You get like a Snicker bar or like yeah. one, uh, you know, fun size Twix. Yeah, or like a Hot Wheels or something. Yeah, like something cool. And now kids are getting, I don't know, here's fifty bucks in cash. Like I'm what? like ashamed to say it, but I still got like an, an Easter basket. You did. Sort of. I mean, my mom did like a small thing, but like it had money in it. And I opened it and I was like, she's still, we still do this. This is great. Like, I want to give it back. Like, <laughs> you feel, can feel I take you to dinner? Money. Like what? The <laughs> yeah. Like what's happening here? My mom gave me scratch tickets. That's good. She did was, you she, win? I did not win. Yeah. Um, she's just like, she asked me, she's like, what do you want? And I was just like, I don't want anything really. I mean, I'm 33 years old now. You don't have to get me anything. Like I can just yeah. buy stuff for myself. That's the thing. Like, so I showed up and she had scratch tickets. Well, that's that's something. That's good. Yeah, it's a thought that counts. Mm -hmm. It's a thought, but that's fun. Money and eggs. Like I wish I was a child. Mm -hmm. Like start the bank account right now. Yeah. Throw the fifties in it. I know. I put in um, one dollar bills into the girls' little, you know, Easter eggs, and they were the most crisp dollar bills I've ever seen. They I came like that. straight from the mint. Like <laughs> just put, I was like, I feel like I treasury. shouldn't be like folding these up and shoving them into the eggs, but crisp dollar bills. Yeah, they hit different. They do, especially <laughs> when you're at the strip club. Not, I mean, I'm not saying that you've ever been there before, but never. Eleven. Um, <laughs> how's how's the year been for you? The, I mean, it's been interesting, right? Like, I think I I kind of thrive in solitude, to be honest. So, like, so <laughs> working from home is your favorite. Like, I never want to go back. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe like once a week, but I wanted to be on my own terms of like, yeah, I'll come in today or. I'll come in tomorrow, whatever it is. But um, 
it's been tough to not be able to do things when I want to do them. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I mean, I'm grateful for how my year has been, all things considered. I mean, you know, raging anxiety aside, <laughs> but like, yeah, it's been okay. Not, I mean, it, it, I guess it works different for everyone. I mean, luckily you're able to do your job from home. Mm -hmm. You created an office in your bedroom. Yeah. Which I think you clearly love more than your actual office. Yeah. I mean, I coffee I, on demand. Ugh. I almost put the Keurig on my desk <laughs> and was like, mm. I can, I can picture this. I can picture you like at a small little desk, like tiny desk yeah. with a giant Keurig. It's actually quite a big desk. I would say it's like, it's probably like, like four this feet, big. like three or four it, feet long. It might be like five. Okay. Cause I have like a dual monitor situation. Oh, you're and, one of those. And I like hand write notes and stuff. So I need like my space. Okay. And, um, you use post-its. I do use post-its. I also have a pretty impressive planner, which is probably the least shocking thing you've there ever was, heard. That was, I don't know how you just managed to do that. There were so many P's in a row that you said pretty impressive planner. <laughs> and I even messed it up. Uh, you are, you do have a sick planner. Yeah. You want to shout her out? Um, I shout out my planner. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out the planner. <laughs> Yeah, just shout out to the planner. <laughs> you and Heather on track. Shout out to my, um, you know, my book of pages that I, I just jot down on my notes in. I love that. Yeah. Um, so we've had this conversation before. Um, I'm pretty sure that we we started COVID. I'm well, not I saying mean, you and I personally, but I think the not, amount of fun. Not from like a clinical medical <laughs> standpoint. Yeah. But like, yes, we. A metaphorical standpoint. A metaphorical standpoint. That's the second time in a row, two weeks in a row that I've had to go. <laughs> Sometimes words word. are hard. Words are hard. Yeah, we um, were, I don't know, we just were like going out a lot. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, we, I like find New Year's Eve to be kind of played out. Like it's not my scene. I feel like it's kind of amateur hour, like whatever. So I always choose to not go out on New Year's Eve and you always work New Year's Eve. And so right. last year we were like, let's do like brunch on New Year's Day and whatever. <laughs> Did we ever do brunch on New Year's Day? <laughs> like maybe one of the best days of my life. Yeah, easily for me. <laughs> it was just, it was just pure insanity. Like we started at maybe 9 a.m. I mean, yes. And we, and then we went to Southie. Yeah. And it was, I believe, a hip hop brunch that Screwloose was doing. Yeah. Shout out to Screwloose. Although <laughs> then we were like, Singing. there was like a lot of Celine Dion yeah. that happened. It was actually a Celine Dion brunch. Yes. I've, I don't think my voice has recovered <laughs> since that day. And I've never listened to more Celine Dion since that day. Yeah. And I mean, there was girls like standing on the tables at stats, like yeah. fist Just, pumping to, um, it's all coming back yeah, to me now. Like. I mean, what else are you going to do when that song comes on? You just, you, you lose all cognitive function. Yeah. The second that song starts, you mm -hmm. just, you're like, I'm, I'm gone. I'm, yeah. And then that's what happened. I mean, I think I watched your soul leave your body. <laughs> Molly soul, Molly soul had already left her body at that point. Our friend Molly, <laughs> manager Molly, yeah. um, <laughs> had, we, we lost it. Yeah. We went everywhere. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that we. I think the place is like closed single, as we left. Yeah. Like throughout the day, they kind of like reached their threshold they were yeah, like, like you're we're done get yeah we're good here get out <laughs> yeah. next place yeah yeah we had we had fun that day that was a blast mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and then look what happened yeah and then it was like a couple weeks later actually i think well it was like the weekend before everything got shut down we impromptu went out on like a sunday yeah again you must have worked on saturday we were like we'll go out on sunday low-key like get lunch whatever i love low i love low-key lunch 1 45 a.m. at memoir rolls around and <laughs> yeah. I was like yeah I was like I think they're gonna shut the world down yeah the world came to a <laughs> screeching halt directly after that so I'm pretty sure yeah. I was also that friend who like those last two weeks going out was like the hand sanitizer the wipes when we yeah. went out like I was already like ready you were like mom friend mode all the time <laughs> yeah that's always me <laughs> here's some wipes kids yeah um yeah that we we had some fun leading mm -hmm. up to yeah the universe was like we're not sure what's going to happen if you keep doing this. So we're <laughs> yeah. going to just put an end to we're it. Gonna, we're just going to stop it right now. You we're not going to give you a choice. You can come back in a year <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> it's like, imagine the punishment. I mean, I literally haven't seen you since. That yeah. Day. Yeah. No, I saw you when I was moving out of on the street. I saw you literally <laughs> <laughs> second time in a row that I've seen you in the street. Uh, yeah. I saw you at, at Mike's in Somerville, mm -hmm. which places fire. Yeah. 
That's where we started at last. That's really weird. Yeah, that is. That That is kind of strange. Yeah. But I saw you, you know, having lunch by yourself. No, I'm kidding. You (laughs) You, you are not by yourself. Hey, no shame in like the solo dining game. Yeah. What's, are you, are you a solo diner? I mean, I think like coming from working in the travel industry, you just kind of get used to it. Like I would travel by myself. That's true. And like post up at a bar, like an airport bar, or like a hotel bar well, or whatever. Airport bars, they're not, those are not real life. Yeah. I mean, those aren't meant for, for groups. No. I mean, airports, airports as a whole are just, with the amount of laws that you think that they have at airports, the second you get through TSA, there's no laws. There's zero laws. It's, yeah. It's like people sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Like bags everywhere. Kids sprinting around without mm-hmm. their parents. Like this woman's eating yogurt with granola and that person's eating like a steak and cheese sub. Yeah. Yeah. At, like, and it's right. and it's all happening at seven in the morning mm-hmm. and everybody's getting drunk. It's like <laughs> it's, it's kind of the best place. It's wild. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not sure that I've ever been this is gonna sound it's terrible. I'm not sure that I've ever been sober in an airport. Mm. I either go in completely hungover. Yeah. Or when I get there, I'm like, I need to fire down a bloody Mary right now and then figure my life out. I've definitely been sober in airports. I also, because I do enjoy like working on an airplane for some reason. Really? Yeah. Like I enjoy like getting my laptop out and like doing work. I think it's like the change of scenery from being like in an office. I mean, back when that was a thing and (laughs) 17,000 years ago (laughs) and just, you know, I do enjoy that. So I would say that I was sober while I did that. But I mean, in my old life, the number of times I showed up at the airport for a flight, like from the club. Yeah alarming yeah i've known you i've known you to leave the club and go right to the airport that's that's a thing you know when the industry calls <laughs> yeah, that's showbiz baby is that, is that, that is showbiz baby that is your that's the line that you give me all the time I know. um yeah i i'm an airport guy i i enjoy people watching at the airport mm-hmm. i mean who doesn't especially yeah. when you're seven bloody marys deep <laughs> and they kick you out of the jet blue terminal so you have to go somewhere else <laughs> um let's talk about your start in the industry yeah. Your, your old life, as you call it. My old life. You started in radio. Yes, I started. Um, actually, and shout out to Joe Maz, who, who exactly, just came in. Exactly. First of all, Joe Maz is a legend. Legend. He's he's one of my favorite people. Working for him is like a dream. He He's just a dream in general. Mm-hmm. Like, guys, like, electric. Everyone's favorite hype man. Yeah, he is. He like, calls me he legend. walked in the room and <laughs> yeah. I felt like a s- true celebrity. I was like, oh, I didn't know we had Lady Gaga here. Yeah, Heather Gaga's in the building. <laughs> <laughs> like... He's yeah. fantastic. So t- tell me more about that. Yeah. So right after college, um, May 2011, not to, you know, really age myself here. <laughs> You're old. Yeah. Um, yeah. Joe hired me to be, to do promotions on the street team at Kiss 108. So that was kind of my introduction into, you know, like the entertainment industry and whatnot. And that was a lot of gig work just doing like promos at like T-Mobile and CVS and whatever. But then there were some cool ones too. Um, you know, doing like the pre-parties for like the Watch the Throne tour at the Garden and stuff That's like sick. that. So things like that that were really cool as well as then starting to, you know, we every year we had like uh, Kiss Concert and Jingle Ball and Summer Jam and Monster Jam. So at those events, I was doing things like artists running, um, and, you know, working closely with artists and their managers. So that was kind of like, that was definitely my introduction into the entertainment industry. Yeah. I mean, you you have uh, like quite the extensive background with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you move into spring breaks. Yeah. With uh, Student City. Yeah. Um, and we're in spring break right now. It is spring break. Is t- uh, just terrifying. I know. Spring break, ter- ter- like, actually terrifies me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of it. I feel like I've seen it all, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that. How how is how is working spring break? And what are some of like your favorite spots to go? And well, least favorite spot. If yeah. you if you have one. So I feel like I have a different perspective of working spring break than like most might think cuz I was way more like behind the scenes. Um I wasn't necessarily like working cuz we would gr- um book, you know, groups of students from huge like to 300 kids. From multiple schools, so thousands of kids in a destination at one time, and um, I more so worked, you know, doing the marketing for these trips. So I was like on social media and that kind of stuff, as well as dealing with the. We booked, you know, artists from Big Sean to Tiesto. So right. working, you know, a lot with those types of things, like the advances, and I was kind of all over the place, to be honest with you. But yeah, like a jack of all trades kind of thing. Yeah, and especially when Jane of all trades, a Jane of all trades, and then when you know, and when 
spring break actually hits, it's kind of like wherever you're needed, you'll, right. you'll do it. Like if I, you know, if there was a shift that I need to cover at a event to make sure our students were safe, I was there. Right. Um, you know, so it was definitely a lot of everything, but yeah, I would say that my least favorite destination and not, not because of the destination itself, more because of me was Punta Cana. Really? What, what about Punta Cana just does not do it for you? So again, it's a me thing. Like I'm, I like to be in control. And when I would go to Punta Cana, it's just the nature of like the location where you get to a resort and like, that's where you're at. Right. So to go to the night events and stuff, it's like a bus ride. And like, I didn't have a, I wouldn't have a car while I was there. Like my coworkers would have cars. So I couldn't just like easily leave the property. Right. Where like, I'm the type of person that wants to like, you know, remove myself from time to time and be like, I need to just like, I need to get away from 1000 college kids. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just, you couldn't do it there. You're like at the resort and that was it. So being like not in control in that way for me, I mean, Punta Cana, like the clubs, there are amazing. Like the resorts are beautiful. So from a traveler perspective, awesome destination for me personally, not not it. Was that, was that (laughs) the, was that the same spot that you used to send me snaps of people playing the middle? Like oh my god! No, I think that was from. I mean, row. yeah, but that was from everywhere. That was that was insanity. You yeah, would, I think you would that be year, like sitting in your bed or like on the balcony, and all of a sudden it would just be the middle for three straight Snapchats. Yeah, that was the year that I went from. I spent like a week in the Bahamas, and then I went straight to Punta Cana for like a week, and then I went to Cancun for like tough, two weeks. Tough life you live. <laughs> yeah, you used to live. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, that was the year that was it Zed and Marin Morris. Yeah, wow, that song. If I heard if I heard it today, it would be too soon. Sam, play it. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, play the middle right now. By like the way, a visceral reaction. Young Sam's here. Yes. Lovely young Sam. Yeah, He's the I just met young Sam today. He's fantastic. Fabulous. Um, what what's been like your favorite place to be, to work on spring break? Definitely Cancun. I mean, I love Cancun. I spent so much time there. One of the first time I went, I was there for six weeks straight and. Six weeks in Cancun sounds like I should do the same thing. Detrimental. <laughs> yeah. To most aspects of your life. But um Did you lose a couple years? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a couple years gone. Yeah, and I was like twenty three, so I mean if there's ever a time to do it, it's then. Um but yeah, I love Cancun. And again, like in the opposite of like what I mentioned about Punta Cana, it was like in Cancun you can walk out the front of your resort and like go to Starbucks. Right heaven for me yeah 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 that's true <laughs> yeah Can- cancun is one of those places that everything is so close mm-hmm. the downtown area is so close to the hotels yeah i mean people get nervous about taking buses and stuff i took the bus Same. all the time by every, myself every time that i've gone to to, to mexico or cancun i'm mm-hmm. in a taxi i'm in a bus I'm i love a, mexico me too i love mexico the hospitality is also I love just mexican like food i love mexican people their culture their hospitality every everything about mexico literally speaks to me as well yeah be like at the club and the, um, you know, like server be like holding a drink and he'd be like, oh, is your ice melted? And I'd be like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> he'd be like, let me, me get you another <laughs> drink. I'm like, ice. okay. That's, like, I mean, their hospitality is just incredible. I love Mexico. Yeah. And that's, I mean, a lot of, a lot of what you do when you're working on spring break is providing hospitality for artists. Mm-hmm. So if the hospitality from the resort mm-hmm. for you is great, yeah, it makes it less stressful for you to be hospitable to somebody else. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. And I love Cancun. Just love Cancun. Yeah, me just too. Beautiful. Downtown. I mean, it's a little much sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't need to take a picture with a monkey. Every time you see me, you've seen me every day this week. <laughs> I, I've already taken one pair of picture oh, over the there with your boy. like dressed as um, like the mask, like oh, outside yeah. Coco Bongo and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I got I got hammered there one night. Really? Yeah. I've never actually been to Coco Coco Bongo, which is insane for like the amount of time I've spent in Mexico, in Cancun specifically. And it's like you look at it every single day. Yeah, I mean, it, the place is just crazy land. Yeah, everything about it's crazy land. I mean, the entertainment is just like out of control. Yeah, that's true. Um, so you you've also not dove into, but like you work some cruise ship stuff. Yep. Um, with Student City as well, like spring break cruises kind of thing. Yep. Um, can you talk about the ups and the downs of cruise life and like booking artists and hospitality stuff and marketing for cruises? Yeah, I would say that, I mean, I'm by no means the person who was booking the hospitality or really dealing, you know, heavily with the artists and their management, but it definitely poses wild, like logistic challenges. Yeah. Um, 
I remember the first year we did our spring break cruise inception at sea and it was, I mean, it's 24 seven, well, it was three or four days, 24 hours of entertainment. So there's always a DJ playing somewhere on the ship or on shore, or wherever you are at all times, some multiple stages going a lot of the time too. But the first year we had the chain smokers play on the private Island. And I mean, the only way to get there was to like fly to Nassau, I think take a boat to the private Island. Like I can't recall that there was a runway unless it was like a tiny like puddle like jump a, situation like a, yeah like a like a dirt path yeah so and i mean it's the chain smokers they have ten thousand engagements to yeah. do so yeah. those guys are great yeah and it was like five seconds after roses had dropped so i mean they had just blown up right and i mean so we had to and then you're in the bahamas there's weather every like five seconds it lasts for five seconds yeah. but like you can't get on one of those puddle jumpers in that kind of weather. Right. So it was just a lot of like, okay, are they going to like, when are they going to land? When are they going to play? And then they need, they have to get off this Island at X time in order to get their flight from Nassau. Right. So it was just like, logistically, it's a lot. Right. And then also running into, we had certain artists, you know, the second year who played on the ship, but didn't like get on the ship at to the stay. beginning. Like to stay. Yeah. Like you'll remember you were there when we had Blau. Oh yeah. And he like, couldn't get we didn't because he was coming straight from our show in Cancun right to get on the boat in the Bahamas yeah while we were having like a day party on the uh, in the Bahamas with Lil John yeah and it was like how was I think he ended up having to fly private like we had yeah. to figure out a private situation for him to make it to the Bahamas in time before the ship leaves because then the ship has to leave the dock that's true yeah so it's just like logistically it's tough. And then, like, you have all these kids here for their last night. They're expecting Blau. Yeah. What if he doesn't get on the ship? I think I started drinking that day. <laughs> that was a, that, that was the day <laughs> that you, you gave up? Yeah. That was also the day that I gave up. I mean, when I was working the those. sunburns we got that day? Yeah. I was not. I was not a happy. I was not a happy boy. Because it was one of those, like, kind of overcast, breezy days in the Bahamas where you're like. Beautiful day. This feels great. Oh, <laughs> awesome. No sunscreen for me. Third degree burns. Here's a tank top. Awesome. Idiots. Yeah. Se yeah. Second degree burns. I was <laughs> probably still burnt from that day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Working those cruise ships is is wild. I yeah. mean, I, I did the artist relations on on the one you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously the, the artists that are booked, you, you kind of have history with. So they're like mm -hmm. your friends or like Mac J, Brody yeah, Jenner. Yeah. They're, they're like your, they're your brothers. boys. Yeah. And they, but they want to party. Right. So like, you know, you have to kind of separate, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I I'm working, I'm working this ship and I have to be somewhat coherent yeah. to, okay, I'm off shift. Mm -hmm. When's my next shift? Eight more hours. Okay. I can drink for three hours, Yeah, but then you, you're screwed. Yeah. But, but on the last night, of inception yeah for me like i said i think i started drinking that day when we were i had like a shot at the beach but yeah i think like for me since i'm never really off in that situation like you had your shifts established yeah but yeah the last night once we're like cruising into the port of miami i was like where's the don julio <laughs> where, <laughs> where is the don julio i like remember this moment yeah you were wearing a onesie oh my god yeah of course you were wearing I was. a onesie just getting absolutely <laughs> hammered I feel like was it a was the theme like pajamas? Yeah, it was or a pajama. It was like a. I never party. participate in themes. I mean, not only when I'm like working, but like when I'm not. I don't know. It's yeah. just like not really my thing. But yeah, that onesie was an amazing decision. Yeah, it was. I mean, one, onesies are an amazing decision, <laughs> just anyways. Yeah. But yeah, to wear one, you know, when you're getting hammered, you might as well be comfortable. Yeah. But that was wild. Mm -hmm. There's every artist on the boat was there. Yeah, on the, just the deck and the sun's rising. It's yeah. pretty incredible, honestly. Now, it was fun. We had a, one conversation, like we had lunch and, and we were standing at like the top of the boat. Yeah. And I was just like, you know how scary this is? Yeah. This is like very scary. It was. Because there's nothing inside except water. Yeah. <laughs> like what's underneath us? I was like, how many like whales do you think are around us? You're like too many. I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I'm it. not thinking about this right now. But then you have no choice. But being on cruise ships is fun. Working on cruise ships is, it has its challenges, but. Then again, you know, it's, oh, you're throwing a, a four day festival on a cruise ship. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. The concept of it is pretty incredible. And we had a great team to pull it off. I mean, you and your co workers, you don't, Tim have, to, you at don't the have to time. shout me out. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. I mean, Marcus, like you guys all did so much. Yeah. We did. We, we had a blast. It's fun to work. I mean, yeah. work in shows is what we do. So it's never actual work, it's more 
you know, mm-hmm. you're providing a service for somebody, but working on a cruise ship was fun. Yeah. Um, you had to bum money. <laughs> this story, I love this story. This was after, yeah. Yeah, you had to you had to bum money from a family to get into a country. Yes. Oh so, my god. Uh, yeah. So, so like, <laughs> let's rewind to where's the Don Julio? <laughs> the Don Julio was right here. Let me get you. So you can tell this story about how you had to steal money from family. And then fast forward about six, seven hours, like not that much time. I'm landing in Punta Cana after this last night that I decided I should just go like ham. Yep. And Molly, my best friend, Molly. Manager Molly. Had come into, what a bad manager, honestly. Terrible manager. Comes into my room as they're like kicking us off the ship and I'm not really like packed. So I was just like throwing all my stuff in the suitcase, including my wallet that had my cash in it. So I land in Punta Cana and I, ne- I had never been there before either, actually. So I didn't even know that there was like you had to pay a, a tax essentially to get into the country. And I can literally see my suitcase like at baggage claim from where I'm standing talking to the immigration agent or whoever it is. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> I don't have any cash on me. How am I going to? What am I going to do? And I was like, it's literally right there. They were like, sorry, like they don't want to hear a thing, yeah. which I don't blame them. Yeah, they hear everything all day long. I I like walk around. There's an ATM that like wasn't working because, of course, it wasn't working. Finally, I go up to this family of like par- two parents and two young kids. And I was like, would you happen to have an extra like $10 US or something it was? Um, I was like, my luggage is right there like I can pay back in two seconds and they like give me the money they're like no problem no problem and they're standing like right next to me getting their bags afterwards and I was like here you go and they like wouldn't even take it I was like that's sweet of them yeah I mean what a disaster you probably smelled of 1942 they're like let's just get this girl to a safe place they wanted me away from their children (laughs) yeah they're like get her away yeah immediately yeah so maybe that's also probably why I don't like Punta Cana that much (laughs) <laughs> because you had to bump money from a family like to get into it. Guard for life. I mean, that I was would, like my, that was maybe, I mean, you know me, I'm like always in control. Yeah. I'm like hyper prepared at all times. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. That was bad. <laughs> I left my laptop. Yeah, you did. I left my laptop. Have you gotten it back ship. yet? Like last week? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four years later, I get my laptop back. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like left it and then I called them and they're just like, you can't come back on. And luckily Marcus, uh, Went on that cruise ship again. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. He ended up going on that cruise ship like a year later, maybe eight months later, and asked about the laptop because they said they still had it on board. Oh, my God. And he showed it to them. <laughs> like, they, they were just like, oh, what does it look like? And I told them exactly the specs of my laptop. There's like stickers on the front. I told him every sticker that was on it. He's like, yeah, it's here, man. I can see it. He's like, they just won't give it to me because you filed a claim, oh. which means they have to release it to you. To you. So I'm like, God damn it. So Did they like, send it back? Yeah, it took like literally 13, 14 months. Don't, <laughs> PSA, do not leave your laptop on a cruise ship. You'll never see it again. Yeah, I mean, like also a, don't start drinking 1942 at 6 a.m. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've been there before, <laughs> clearly. Um, we've also had, had some fun times at, at the previous spot that I used to work with Envy, mm-hmm. uh, where you know, we, I worked at Royale. <laughs> and... Uh, God. We used to have DJs that used to work those shows. They're friends of ours. Uh, come to NV East, which was an apartment we had yeah. in uh, Dorchester. Maybe three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and we would have DJs. Real, real famous DJs DJing <laughs> yeah. in a small kitchen like the size of this table. Amazing. CDJs in the kitchen. So much fun. Austin making pancakes. Yeah, like six of us. It's Marcus not like a house mimosas. party. It's just like yeah. famous DJ and like your three, four, yeah, five closest friends. Five people. Yeah. It'd be like Hardwell came one night and it was yes. literally seven people. Mm-hmm. Chucky came one night. Same thing. You were there. Yeah. It's like six people. I Like those videos pop up every once in a while. Yeah. And it's like us singing. Usher. Uh, we're singing Usher. <laughs> we're singing Usher. And there's, it's just Chucky playing for four idiots. Yeah. <laughs> like so four drunk idiots. Yeah. It's just like me on the floor singing. You remind me with like all the passion in my body that will come out yeah literally Amazing. but it's it's one of those places one of those things that every every time it happened like slushy came through i mean i already said hardwell and chucky um there's a couple other people that came through 
Like people uh, like the slander guys came through. Oh, imagine, wow. imagine being no. the neighbor underneath and slander is not playing Usher. <laughs> like, like Chucky was playing music that you would listen to and just be yeah, like, oh, it was fun. They're making love upstairs. Oh, like God, yeah. sl slander comes and plays the kitchen. It's like somebody's getting murdered a right here. I don't know how like there wasn't an eviction. Yeah, I don't know either. Like we had one one cop showed up. We had one cop show yes, up. I was there for and that one. Can can I come in? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> like, why are we letting you in here? Yeah. No. And he was just like, okay, guys, just turn the music down. It's like, thanks. You want to tell the number one DJ? <laughs> you want to tell the number one DJ in the world <laughs> to turn, to turn the, music the music down? down? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go downstairs and tell our neighbor to come yeah. up, have yeah, a few drinks. Come up, fun. Yeah, that was that was a wild time. Yeah. And it it became like synonymous with DJs to be like. We going back to Envy East? Yeah. We going back to Envy East? So, so and it'll fun. always just be like a small collection of people mm -hmm. and like one famous DJ that wanted to keep playing. Yeah. I mean, because we would like kind of hang out in the green room afterwards until we got kicked out. Yeah. And then it would be like, what do you guys want to do? What, yeah. What do you guys want to do? Oh, hey, look, let's just go back to the house. There's a mm -hmm. couple of bottles of champagne there already. Let's just, just rage. Yeah. Because even at that point, we, weren't, we didn't even really drink like a ton more. We just kind of no, hung out. We just, yeah, it was more along the lines of like Austin would be making food or doing something crazy. Amazing. Yeah. And we would just listen to DJs. Yeah. Which is <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Like looking back, I'm like, what a time. Yeah. It's kind of it's some, like, it's something to think about. Yeah. It's something weird it, to it think about. It felt so normal to us and not to be like, Chucky, Annoying, Chucky played grand and he was just like, oh, we going back to that house party? Uh, and we're like, it doesn't exist. that house party doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> like, I'm sure we got evicted. No, they actually like the person who owned the apartment ended up like selling it or something. Yeah. Like that. But those came to an end. Maybe, maybe when I move back to the city, I'll just. I mean, your spot's going to have to be the spot. Mar Marky P East, mm -hmm. the, Mar <laughs> the Marky P show club. Yeah, right. Where I live in a studio that can hold just me and I'm just like, eh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, C just. CDJ's three people and me. Yeah. I mean, that's all it was. In a 29 square foot apartment. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it was anyway. Fun um, times. That was a blast. Mm -hmm. That was a blast. So we are at the point of the show where we bring in young Sam. Ooh. What's good? There he is. <laughs> God, I love him so much. Uh, the Susan segment where Susan's supposed to be doing her homework, but she is not. She creates questions for me. Love it. Shout out to Susan. Shout out to Susan. And uh, let's fire through them. You ready? Let's go. Hey, Sam, you ready? Ready. I think Sam's getting blindsided with some questions today. 100%. <laughs> Let's hope this goes well. This is either going to go one of two ways for Sam. Okay. Sam is either going to say like something wild or he's going to be like, nah, I got, I got nothing here, bro. <laughs> there's no going to be no in between. There's going to be no middle ground here. Um, all right. So the first question is name a food that you love that other people would find weird. You want me to go? Yeah, guest first, ladies first. We're we're gentlemen. We're Sam and I are gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if like a lot of people would find this weird, maybe, but um, octopus, like pulpo, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't I don't really eat octopus. Mm -hmm. Not my vibe. It's like not something that I have frequently by any means, um, but my grandmother makes it for Christmas Eve. What doesn't your grandmother make? I know. So she, shout um, out to grandma. Shout out to grandma. All the grandmas. A legend. Um, but yeah, octopus, I think. Okay. Sam, what do you got? Oh, no. <laughs> Come back to me. Shake. Come back to me. I saw the head shake. So I have like this unhealthy relationship with pepperoncinis, pepperoncinis, whatever however you want to say it. Okay. I just fucking eat them. Like, I just eat them like candy. I like a know jar. I had one. I See? mean, maybe on like an antipasto, right? Yeah. But like, just skip the rest of the pasto <laughs> and just give me those. <laughs> Like, that's what I want. Like, give me the hot peppers and I'll just eat them like 30 at a time or jardinera, just like pickled vegetables. Okay. I'm, I'm fucking weird. All right. So hear me out. Oh boy. <laughs> you know how peanut butter crackers are like, you know, um, well, I don't buy peanut butter crackers. I also don't buy crackers, but I buy Cheez-Its and I do spoonfuls of peanut butter. So I'll do like a spoonful of peanut butter. A and peanut butter Cheez-It. Yeah. Wow. It's because those crackers are like cheese anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. they're cheddar, right? They're yeah. They're pretty much cheddar crackers. But yeah. like peanut butter, a spoonful of peanut butter and a couple Cheez-Its, I'm telling you. I mean, Cheez-Its are an elite level snack, I think. Extra toasted. Uh, yeah. You extra do the toasted? extra toasted? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's really good. I always thought about like one, I'm like a savory and sweet combination person. I've always thought that like. That's also your personality. <laughs> I've always Nailed thought it. that like chocolate covered cheese it's would be incredible. <laughs> I've wow. never done it. We're gonna do it. 
I feel like I should do it. You should do it. And then you should send us the video of like whatever <laughs> face you make after you have chocolate covered cheese. I think that, that would be amazing. Vile. That sounds you so, think so? Yeah. I think it sounds great. Chocolate covered cheese at Sam. What do you think? Oh, I'm down. You're down too? Oh, I'm down. Oh, so Sam's I guess I'll just, I'll just F Sam, myself. Sam gets it. Sam gets it. <laughs> um, what's your biggest pet peeve when out in public? Mm. <laughs> There's like uh, just everyone. <laughs> Everything. Um, I think that like recently, like during COVID, especially when people like show up to the grocery store and there's blatantly a line queued outside, but they just think that they can like walk right in the front of the store. Ooh. Like, I mean, ideally that's what we would be doing. Right. But like, have you not been out in a year? But this line is 33 deep at Trader Joe's right now. Yeah. And it's 27 degrees. Like get in the line. <laughs> Go freeze yourself, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Let's- just... It's not that hard. It, that's true. I respect that. What do you got, Sam? Bad parkers. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you hate that. Oh, my. Sometimes I fight the urge, like every urge in my body to like write a note. Yeah. But like, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be a Karen. So. No, that'd be a Ken. You'd be a Ken. A Ken. <laughs> You'd be a Ken. I just made that up. A male a Karen's a Ken. No, nah, I think Chad, Brad's and Chad's. Brad's and Chad's are cool. They, they might are be they? cool. I think they might be back. I think Brad's and Chad's might be back. Oh. Apparently it's white boy summer. So oh yeah. My well, yeah, God. I saw we that. <laughs> I saw that. That was what Chet Hanks being a fucking wild man. First of all, if you're Tom Cruise's son, just be a stand up human being because Tom Cruise is great. Oh God. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Cruise is a nice guy too. I bet. Did I say Tom Cruise? You said Tom yeah. Cruise. Fuck. Tom, like Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Chet Hanks. Tom Hanks son. Okay. But he, his name is Chet. Do you expect anything <laughs> no, else? No, I don't. From Chets are Chet? always having a hot boy no. Ch- yeah. or whatever it is. I feel like Chet is more of a Chad name than Chad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If there was a bigger right. Chad, it's Chet. Wow. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, Chet Hanks can fuck off. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> no, he, just kidding. He, I know people like him because I, I think he's kind of putting on a shtick, mm-hmm. right? It's definitely a sh- yeah. He's always like it's I don't think he's being serious. I don't think he I don't think he's ever been serious a day in his life. It's a persona. It's definitely a persona that he just lives with. Like if you're Tom Hanks's son, you have to kind of be a good person. But honestly, he could have picked the worst persona, so like Yeah. He, I don't I don't mind him too much. Yeah. I mean okay. I don't really know anything about him. We're just gonna call it hot boy summer from here on out. <laughs> and I, I don't I mean I don't qualify for that, but like all the hot boys <laughs> out there, do your thing. Um mine mine would be Cause I'm a bigger guy, you know, when you're like walking down the street and, and you're on the sidewalk and people walk by you, but in, instead of them getting out of your way, you have to like forcibly move yourself out of the situation. Yeah. There's like a pole. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's literally like, <laughs> literally like you're about to blast into a fucking pole and you have to move yourself out of the way. Like, why can't we just mutually agree to just move out of each other's way? Well, it's cause it's cause we're in Massachusetts. Everyone's a mass hole. That's, that's mm-hmm. also true. But like, imagine this. Imagine Chris Costa from last week, five foot five, 120 pounds, 120 pounds. He's walking one way and I'm walking the other. If we don't move, I'm going to shoulder him. Right. And it's not going to end well for him. Not, not, not like I'm not going to throw my shoulder and don't like tackle him. But like if we brush shoulders, like my, it would be more, it, sorry to cut you off, but it would be more of a hip check. He, that's how short he is. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is gonna he's gonna unsubscribe to the show. He's gonna have he's gonna have his episode removed from YouTube. But he'd like end up in the harbor. Yeah, you'd like you'd, you'd get you'd end up literally next to Barking Crab. Like <laughs> not a bad place to not end a up. bad place to be if you if you're into that stuff. But like yeah, it's like just how about we either mutually agree to move out of the way, mm-hmm. or we're just gonna smash shoulders together and we're gonna see who wins. Well, shouldn't we just mutually agree? Like why yeah. is this even? But you notice, like, have, yeah, I, you, have you done it? You're, like, walking down the street in Saudi and, like, people are walking towards you. Also, not having a care in the world. Yeah. You're doing that thing where they're, they're, like, just so incognizant of your, like, your space. And they just walk. And they just, like, walk into you. It's just, like, eyes up here. <laughs> eyes up here. It's yeah. just common courtesy. People lack it. Yeah. That's also People lack it. Let's go, Sam. <laughs> That's Sam the producer of the year. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Truly. He's going to win this belt. <laughs> He's going to win this belt. Oh, Guaranteed. And then you're going to have to flex it in your BMW. <laughs> Drive around. Sam's rich. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really not. <laughs> Name an artist or a band that your parents listen to that you also like. Um, well, I grew up with my parents and their friends listening to The Who. Okay. Not really my choice. Like, 
I mean, I'll listen to it, whatever. But I think that um, more so, like, my mom and I, like, her taste, we've, like, we've gone to see Billy Joel and, like, Elton John together. So jealous. So jealous Amazing. of that. We saw, I you think bought, Elton John was my last concert before COVID, actually. Yeah, you bought those tickets on the black the black market, the black web. Like. You went, like, deep into the dark web. Yeah, we actually went the year before, too, and then we went, what was it, twenty November 2019, like, the day before my 30th birthday. But, um, you went to a sketchy website that brought no. you in through a portal. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but um, that led yeah. you to Chris Hansen, and he's the one that sold you tickets. Okay, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Um, yeah, so I would say like Elton John and Billy Joel. My mom and I are on like the so same jealous. wavelength of that. We Those, actually went to Madison Square Garden to see Billy Joel, and it was amazing. Oh, yeah, God. that's a bucket list. That's a bucket list thing for me. Yeah, Billy Joel, incredible, incredible. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Uh, when I was a kid, my mom put me onto Nora Jones. Ooh. Nora Jones. Yeah. I, what is she? I I know I know the name, but the song is eluding me. Can you sing it? Absolutely not. <laughs> I just tried to bait him into that one. It didn't work. But like Nora Jones, like she's got some bangers, and like it has to be a mood. It has to be the right mood. Like I don't think I can listen to Nora Jones like on a. 80 degree day like sunny <laughs> it has to be like a cold rainy day you're walking to starbucks yeah you might like with heather <laughs> that's where she lives it's almost like a john mayer vibe like 100 oh, okay. oh, yeah 100%. i respect that she i like that it. she gets yeah. it i like that <laughs> um my dad listens to barry white i also love barry white um and and the Bee Gees. i'm a Bee Gees guy yeah like, throw throw me on some disco that's fun throw me on some disco you know john travolta just hitting some Boom. <laughs> just, just let, you know, disco. Barry White, Bee Gees. My dad and I ca- kind of have the same taste. My dad will, like, every once in a while, like, listen to Eminem. Like, old school Eminem. Really? Yeah. He just, like, won't turn it off. He'll just be like, oh, this is fine. It's like, hmm. all right, Pop. Angry. <laughs> all right, Pop. You upset? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to talk about who, it? Who hurt this man? <laughs> you want to talk about it, Dad? <laughs> um, yeah, so those two. Um, <laughs> this one sucks. Sorry, Sue, this one's tough. Um, can you do any impressions of celebrities or cartoons? No. No, I don't have any. Nothing. I, I'm awful at impersonations. I've like tried doing like the De Niro. <laughs> you gonna try it right now? I would absolutely not try it right now. Damn it! I will make a mockery of myself. I'm trying to get him to sing. I'm trying to make yeah. him do impressions. Marky, I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Producer of the year. Yeah. You know, definitely you, producer you got, of the year. You got nothing. I don't know. I can't do any impressions, although, like, I can recite every word of, like, Home Alone. You can do that. From beginning to end. I wouldn't say it's an impersonation or an impression or anything like that, but, like. You're a sicko. (laughs) You watch Home Alone, what, three times a week? (laughs) Like. Four to five. Well, four to five. I knew it. (laughs) So it's like you're bored throwing Home Alone. Well, like, put it on at home, and I'll be like, I I can say every line if you want me to. That's crazy. And Molly's like. Please do not. <laughs> Please don't ruin this experience. Yeah. I'm like, you want me to hum the score of the film? <laughs> yeah. You no? can do that too. You can I do once... that with Jurassic Park. Boom. Dude. Jurassic Park is lit. When I'm working at home, anywhere, when I'm working, the Jurassic Park score is like what I'm listening to. If you want to get so... focused in the zone, it's so good. And like feel like you're in a helicopter flying into an island. It's amazing. It's incredible. Mm. Do you like Jurassic Park? Of course. Yeah. Who doesn't? Of course. Jurassic Park is fantastic. I... I don't really have any impressions. I, I thought I have one in my head. I used to do like Donald Trump just to piss people oh off. But like, I feel like when it comes to impressions, you either have it or you don't. Yeah. yeah. Like right? I, I, I'm going to try Donald Trump. All right. Uh, there are three things that I know. <laughs> uh, Marky P shows the best. It's the greatest of the best and mostly the best. <laughs> <laughs> How'd I do? Hugely the best. Solid. It's, it's solid. It, it's hugely the best. Huge. It's huge. The Marky P show is huge. Oh my God. It's my favorite podcast. <laughs> now you have to do the hand thing. You have to, because he always uses his fucking hands. It's the best. It's huge. Like, like his ego. My ego. I kind of um, hate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring, gives him some PTSD. <laughs> Did I just PTSD everyone as I lose, as I lose 6,000 subscribers that I don't yeah. have? Um, and the last but not least, what was your first AOL AIM screen name? Uh, this was before my time, so I have no answer. <laughs> oh my God. I know Sam. I forgot Sam's 17. I am the ripe age of 23. <laughs> the ripe. He's, 
He's That's single. When, actually, are no. you single? Uh, no. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Does it's, somebody else think you're not single? It's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. Like, does someone think is that, that on you're Facebook? Her, their boyfriend? Are you not? Are you? I, mean, I would say I, I would say I'm in the honeymoon phase right now. Okay, oh, it's so not a bad place to be. Okay, that's a good that's a good place to be. So it's like we haven't really like I haven't asked. She hasn't asked. Like, mm-hmm. what are we? So having DTR is that what they call it? Define the relationship. DTR. I thought that I thought that I thought you were going down to fuck like DTF. <laughs> no, this uh, is a family show. Family isn't show. It? Yeah, yeah. Family show. Yes, yeah, family sh- show. Shout out her. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. She, she knows who she is. Uh-huh. Oh. Fresh. If Sam doesn't get better and better each week, it's out of control. Oh, good. We're giving him a raise. One, uh, he's getting one dollar. Oh, nice, nice. What nice. was what was yours? Oh, my aim screen name. Mine was bad. Yeah, mine's like truly embarrassing. Like yeah, I think I would too. rather have a toddler performing dental work than tell you what it was, but I'll tell you. <laughs> um, Maybe we can get both. <laughs> God, I think it was. <laughs> Oh boy. It's not like, it's probably not that bad, but to me, like I'm like the meme of like sitting up at night thinking about what I did on October 2nd, 1997, like yeah. and having anxiety about it. Um, I think it was baby Chica 1943. Okay. And you know what? I think that it was like one of those sites you went to that you like entered in some stuff and it like told that's, you what your screen name that's should exactly be. That's exactly what like, mine 1943 was. 1943 is like the last four digits of like my phone number growing up. Yeah. I don't know what the, what did I put in that baby Chica was like the best <laughs> option? Yeah, I, I completely understand. I went to a, I went to a screen name generator as well. Yeah, like that's kind of what. I don't remember the numbers on mine, but mine was Vanilla Monkey. Stop. Vanilla <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember the numbers, but it was a, what did I put? Like the same thing. Vanilla Monkey. What the? F- like, what's your favorite ice cream? That's, what's your favorite animal? That's like, okay, straight up like a it. random name generator. It was literally a yeah. random name generator. And I, cause I don't know, 10 years old, 11 years old. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like. Did you ever like have another screen name? Yeah. It went to MP card. Oh, <laughs> like, well, that's like, respectable. And then right. it went from that to Marky P. My second one, you know, once I had my wits about me, <laughs> this is like worse, was head, baby, two eyes, obviously. Okay. I think it was XOXO. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah, I mean. XOXO, signing off. What's that from? Gossip the Gossip Girl. Girl. Yeah, that's, I have to imagine I like came up with that one on my own. Yeah, that's... Uh, Tragic. Well, this lives on the internet forever. We say this every <laughs> week, Sam. Um, and I mean, look, I'm, I'm Vanilla Monkey, so... Yeah, that's like, a bit. Like, that's a lot. Like, what, did I, what happened? Who allowed me to do that, first of all? Why were they not just like, use your name, dude? It sucks just as much as Vanilla Monkey does. Was there like a certain <laughs> level of um, anonymity that we wanted like back yeah. in Because it was like, it kind of like came off like the chat room phase. And I think in chat rooms, which I never like went into chat rooms, but I think sure. you, you, <laughs> ASL, I think that you, um, <laughs> like. <laughs> See, I knew that reference. Yeah. Yeah. So you, good. He still uses it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm on Omegle every day. <laughs> I don't even like know what that is. <laughs> chat roulette <laughs> oh i know chat roulette dude chat roulette was wild we used to in college chat like pull up chat roulette like at a party and just like yeah. what the why it was just it was just dick after dick i feel like not we didn't manscaped get a, either it wasn't even a manscaped dick so it's like we didn't get it we would get like children being like hee hee and i'd be like we need to turn this off this is like <laughs> oh no i got like six-year-old guys just Dropping their hammer on, yeah. on their You were one of the children that came up on it. <laughs> oh, I was like, it was like every Friday night, it was like me and like a few of my friends down in the basement in my, uh, on a laptop <laughs> on Omegle. And we're like, wow, the internet's a wild place. <laughs> the internet <laughs> like, I hate it here. Truly, me too. The internet is truly a wild place. We were just yeah. so fascinated. We we're like, that's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> guy just puts his dick on the website, like on, on the web. Oh my God. Yeah. That was bad. That was, what a terrible time. Yeah. But I think that's, that's, that's why our like screen names. Pull up chat roulette right now. I think that's why our screen names were like, meant nothing. Yeah, they did. It literally meant nothing. And then my second one though, I re- in your second one, we really went for it. Like yeah. there was some level of personalization there. You yeah. had full last name. That was ballsy. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> it was weird. And I think I, I'm pretty sure like my fucking social security number was in it. No. <laughs> You're lying. Like I'm dead serious. No. 
Like, I'm pretty sure the last digits in my MP card were like my social security number. There's five market P's out there right now. Yeah, there's something's happening. Oh, God, somebody, that's the last thing we need. Somebody just bought a TV at fucking Best Buy <laughs> <laughs> with my old screen name from 1993. Oh, my God. Yeah, it'd be brutal. Yeah. But um, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having hope me. You, this I hope fun. you enjoyed your time. Um, I did, although you got this, a belt is, to win. Like, this is my scary. Worst, this is my worst nightmare. Yeah, that's what you said leading in. You were just like, oh, I have mic phobia. The sound of my own voice is like. And you're getting it loud in your headphones. Yeah, and you know when, um, like, you know when someone leaves you a voice, or like you leave someone a voicemail, and they're like, "Oh yeah, don't really leave me this voicemail. Like, let's listen to it." Um, <laughs> uh, no, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hard pass on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you again. You're amazing. Love you. Love you too. Uh, thanks everybody. Like, subscribe. Wait before I go. Sixty nine percent of you that watch my videos on YouTube are not subscribed. 69 percent 69 and i love that number but i need it to be 69 subscribed percentage so let's go hit the subscribe button it's very easy just click it it's red boom Sup support homie support the homie support sam yeah i'm trying to win a belt <laughs> he's trying to win a belt <laughs> let's go until next week everybody peace <laughs>